watch and listen to this please watch and listen do not forget to share the watch and watch and listen <laughs> Monday, March 23, 2020. It is a brand new week. Hello and welcome. The news on 88.4 Royal FM and live on Facebook on Royal FM. Cameron with me, Promise Akante, at Top Stories. <laughs> As the number of coronavirus cases hit 56 in Cameroon, calls continue to increase for more precautions to be taken both by the government and by civilians. Out of the country, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has announced the country's first death from the coronavirus. And in sports, the under-17 girls team of Sao Tome and Principe has left Cameroon after being blocked in the country for over a week since their match recently against the under-17 lionesses of the country. Stay with us for details. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. My name is Promise Akante. The head of state, President Paul Bia, has called on all Cameroonians to reject or to respect the guidelines given by the government and by the World Health Organization to curb the spread of the coronavirus in the country. He did this via short text messages sent to citizens over the weekend. Still talking about COVID-19, members of ECOWAS have decided to provide support to each other in a drive to sustain the ravaging effect of COVID-19 on the sub-regional economy. The 15 ECOWAS member states have called for a closure of borders to international flights, but however, they have agreed that special um, that flights that special waivers should be granted to flight bringing critically needed supplies and inputs into their countries. The member states, in a nutshell, are devising strategies to cope with the health and economic effects of COVID-19. And the first coronavirus-related deaths have been recorded in Cameroon. It is the uncle of the ace footballer and football consultant Patrick Mboma. The uncle, Ashil Esome Mokuri, who died this morning in Douala. A, his death comes as Cameroon's Minister of Public Health this morning in a tweet announced a sharp rise in the number of confirmed cases. Dr. Manawada Malashi tweeted that they tested 26 samples and 16 were positive, 9 cases in Douala, 6 in Yawunde and 1 in Bafusam, bringing the total number of cases in Cameroon to date to 56. The minister continues to draw the attention of everyone to observe the basic measures to save lives at a time when the coronavirus virus rampage continues the watchword remains washing of hands avoiding crowds and limiting movements talking of which most christians yesterday had to adapt to the new schedules for church services and holy masses yesterday as most church officials came up with programs taking into consideration the number of people per session to respect the maximum number of 50 people in a gathering stipulated in the 13 measures put in place by the government to curb the spread of the coronavirus, Christians were expected to turn out to church at different hours. A reporter, Jementa, sought to know from Christian faithful how they lived their first Sunday regarding these measures, and she now reports. Praying God is the only arm remaining for Christians faithful as some of them attended church services yesterday without excluding measures the government laid down in a bid to fight against the spread of coronavirus. I went to church yesterday. They said that only 49 persons need to enter the church with the father. People was outside and they closed the door. I have the chance that I was inside. Policeman was there. No error. I told the people that we have to accept it. For me, I don't care me about Corona. But I'm respecting the measure that they take about Corona. According to some Christians faithful, there is no need to play with fire. 
I no go church because sick day, I feel say I feel sick go church, I go call it empty sick. But now so a day market, I don't know whether the sick will meet up me for market or you know will meet up, I don't know. Now I, I the respect where the way government don't talk for fight against the corona. Avoiding crowds is the main in aim of some Christian faithful as they believe God can answer prayers everywhere. My first Sunday with Corona virus, I was not in the church because uh, I've respected precious measures of government. That more than 15 persons should not yes, regroup. Pray my God in my home. I pray. I it is clear that these Cameroonians faithful are ready to comply with measures the government put in place in a bid to contain the spread of the deadly virus in our country. Jementa in the report, as you heard earlier on, the first coronavirus related death has been recorded in Cameroon, and it is with that I welcome you, Abel Bela Samari. Good afternoon, Abel. Oh, good afternoon, Pomi Sakante. Abel, following the death of a Cameroonian in Douala as a result of the coronavirus, you in the following commentary say it is time Cameroonians stop playing with fire. Indeed, Pomi Sakante, when I listen to French President Emmanuel Macron before the lockdown in Paris, France, said we are in a war against the coronavirus and seeing Italian Prime Minister weeping and calling on God to save Italy. The government of Italy have tried all possible methods to curb the coronavirus, but the death toll keeps increasing. In next door Germany, mighty Angelin Merkel's ability to remain the public face of Germany's coronavirus response was thrown into question after the chancellor quarantined herself at home following contact with the doctor who later tested positive for the disease. This is to tell us that coronavirus is not respectance of person, age, size, social status or religious background. When Public Health Minister Dr. Mandaoda Malashi comes out to tell the public that he has been noticed that many Cameroonians are not respecting the basic hygiene principle laid down by the World Health Organization to wash our hands regularly with clean water and soap. This shows that some Cameroonians behave, believe they are immune to the coronavirus COVID-19. Following the death toll recorded in Douala, it is high time we stop playing with fire. The coronavirus is deadly and requires all as one man, one community to fight this virus. You, that parents that have decided to drag your children to the market to hawk after government closed down schools for safety, know that when coronavirus, that is COVID-19, come knocking at your door, you will be the greatest loser and not the government. You, that bar owner that would decide to open your bar after 6 p.m., just know that you are not only endangering the life of those who come there to drink, but you and that of your family. But let me tell you, with you seeking bush follower that have decided not to heal to the minister's call for you to be tested and quarantined, know that propagating any public health disease in the country like COVID-19 is punishable by the penal codes of Cameroon. If you are innocent, please consult Article 260 of Chapter 4 of the Penal Code. Then you will know that prison terms await you, that individual. Cameroon is still in the preliminary stage of this public health pandemic, and the best way to curb the spread of this COVID-19 virus is to respect all laid and principle with no one policing anybody. Remember that life is sweet and precious, but death is inevitable. Don't die like a fool. Don't die a foolish death because of your own negligence. Staffman Abel Vela Samari. The international or the Yaoundé Sigmar International Airport has remained closed to international flights. Talking to reporters today in Yaoundé, the director of the airport Amogu Ejua Emil said only local Kameko flights have so far been circulating. This follows the government's decision to close its international borders in a bid to curb the coronavirus pandemic in Cameroon. You are listening to the 2 p.m. 88.4 Royal FM. 2020 February 9th legislative and municipal elections, Royal FM at the forefront of the events, bringing you news of the actors and happenings surrounding the elections. Our special page on the news. 
Good afternoon to you, Grace Limunga Mukake. Good afternoon, Promise Akanti. Now, the conduct of the March 22nd partial legislative rerun in the North and South West regions have been described as free and fair. The Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, was speaking yesterday in a declaration based on reports from administrative and security officials in the region. And the election rerun, Grace, you contacted some officials who took part in the elections and we get some of their reactions in this report. The election took place in 11 constituencies precisely in the English-speaking regions of Cameroon. Amongst those who voted in the northwest region of Cameroon was the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji. After voting, he had this to say. Those prescriptions from the head of state, which were all outlined by the prime minister head of government, must be respected. That would be the best way for us to fight against the coronavirus, which is devastating. As for now, so far, so good. The region is calm. He goes ahead to salute those who did turn out to vote yesterday in Bamenda. And I think that is the best way to exercise democracy. Those who are going to vote are voting for the construction of the nation. And I think it's important that uh, we all remain Republicans. And at the end of the day, the ballot boxes will decide and we should all stand by the vetting. The governor of the northwest region of Cameroon, Adolf Lililafrique, appreciates the mobilization that surrounded the election. We will uh, mobilize all the stakeholders, including the people that were elected throughout the process, to uh, mobilize behind the head of state, the government, to rebuild this nation, to bring back long-lasting peace. And we, for that, need the collaboration of everybody. The Secretary of State in the Ministry of Basic Education, Dr. Asheri Kilo, accompanied the governor and inspected government's primary school Furawa, which is said to have been banned by the separatist fighters. She, in the following except, says she will convey the following message to President Pierre. I wish to take the message to our head of state that these, my people here, are together with him. They support him. And that one of the first things that we would love for him to do for us is to re-establish these schools, is to refurbish these schools, so that our children, many of them that we've seen along the roads, would be able to go back to school. Reports have it that there were attempts to disrupt the polls in Jakiri. Epule Monoke is the divisional officer of Jakiri who thought it wise to reassure public opinion before the end of the voting phase. We recorded a few cases of insecurity but which were quickly brought under control. We witnessed a few gunshots in town. We must say the population this time around have braved the odds. We have quite a good number of voters who are trickling into the polling stations and uh, we hope as the day unfolds we shall have many more. The election equally took place in the southwest region of Cameroon, precisely in the Lebi Alem division. The minister delegate in charge of planning at the Ministry of the Economy, Planning and Regional Development, Paul Tassong, headed to the CPDM campaign team in Lebi Alem. I must say I am I'm satisfied by the fact that despite all the odds, people have still decided to challenge the situation, stand up to the situation and come back to vote again. I insist on voting again because we had voted on the 9th of uh, February 2020. Uh, the people of Libya, especially the militants and sympathizers of the CPDM, is that it's a vote of confirmation. And we are looking forward to having a better performance. At the end of the voting yesterday, the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paula Tanganji, granted a press briefing in Yaoundé to reassure the population that everything went on well. Today's polls were calm, free and fair. No major incident likely to affect the smooth conduct of this by-election or its credibility has been reported by the local administrative authorities and the law enforcement officers. Like in the past, administrative authorities alongside defense and security forces provided Elecan with appropriate security coverage in its mission and this to the satisfaction of all the political stakeholders involved. Observers who were on the field did their work freely. Results will be proclaimed by the Constitutional Council, the only body vested with the powers to do so. So I urge all the political stakeholders to stay calm and wait for the proclamation of the results. 2020 twin elections, that was our special page on the news. 
On to something else, the 2020 edition of World Water Day has been celebrated in Cameroon on March 22nd. This day is about focusing attention on the importance of water. This year's edition that was celebrated under the banner Water and Climate Change did explore how water and climate change are inextricably linked. The World Water Day 2020 campaign explains statements such as we cannot afford to wait. Water can help fight climate change and everyone has a role to play. How do Yawne city dwellers feel about the way water is distributed in their country? Grace Limungamukake caught up with some of them. It is time for us to take a stock on uh, the water crisis that is presently rocking a national triangle. Because uh, we cannot just celebrate the World Water Day without uh, creating an awareness if actually we have portable water in Cameroon. Because uh, it's really difficult sometimes if you go to some places, you will see that people are using the boreholes at least to get water to drink. Portable water is not enough in Cameroon. The supply of the cubes of water in Cameroon is insufficient to the population because pollutions are growing every day. Even the least what the portable water we don't even have. But the resources are there. The government does not want to boast of the development so as to have portable water in Cameroon. The one problem lies, the first problem is that of development. You know that there, there are local development committees thanks to the Ministry of Decentralization that the supply of water can be increased because the local committees now will be in charge of looking about the water development. But water still remains a problem in Cameroon because in my house water has not flown for about two, three days. It comes today, it go back tomorrow. Uh, if it comes tomorrow, it is black. Tomorrow, it comes, it is white. There are some neighborhoods around the country that don't have possible water. They don't have water that actually flows from the taps. People struggle. They go long distances to fetch water. And some of them even stay up at even right up to 2, 2 p.m., right up to 2 a.m. in the night to be able to fetch water. Because in some neighborhoods, water only uh, flows late in the night, so people don't sleep. They will have to wait at those hot hours to have the dirty water that will come out of the taps. For example, in the Essos neighborhood here in Yaoundé, it is worst, especially around uh, Hotel Du Plateau and Titi Garage. There is no water. Water does not flow at all. In the morning, you will see mothers, children, they are, they are on the road with uh, containers turning around to fetch water or to go and buy water where they will see it flowing and the water even flowing is coming out from a uh, drills what we commonly call forage it means it is somebody that has made his drill and the water is coming out by the help of a a, 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 a mechanical pump some city dwellers reacting there now how how should Cameroon celebrate this day our reporter grace limungamukake did put forth the above question to a city dweller i do not know if the day should actually be celebrated but because it should be we should see in measures that have been put in place in order to improve on the water supply or at least some hope that in the days ahead we will not find ourselves in the same situation it is said that for water to be sufficient each individual needs 20 to 40 liters per day but if we do not have even a glass of water per day that we can take and sometimes even the problem may not be the quantity of the water, but the quality too. You open the tap, you look at the water, you look at your hands, at times you end up not washing your hands. You feel that your hands are better than the water that is coming out of the tap. So if the water that is meant to give us life, or that is life in itself, is not serving that purpose, then what next? How important is water to the human body? Our reporter Grace Limunga Mukake caught up with a medical doctor to know how important water is to the body. Dr. Enos Syria now expansiates. Statistics say that water makes up more than 50% of the human body. Water is found in blood, most of our fluids, sweat, saliva, tears, and all those things constitute liquids. So water is very important in the human body because it helps in digestion, it helps in urination, it helps to dilute your urine because sometimes when you don't drink enough water, you see that your urine is really concentrated, really colored. It helps in diluting your urine, it helps in the hemodynamic system, it helps even in the blood circulation. The more you drink water, the easier for your blood to be a little less thick. So we tend to have less headaches and stuff that go with it. Water is very important for us to drink, for us to bathe with, for us to clean up. I would say to everybody that you have to try as much as possible to drink at least two liters of water a day because it helps you a lot. Now when you say two liters of water, 
some persons might not understand. Two liters of water is basically 1.5 and a half of water per day. If you are someone that doesn't drink much water, I would say at least you can decide to drink a glass every three hours. By the end of the 24 hours, you'll have drunk enough water to help your, your day go okay. With the many people decrying the fact that the water they consume is not portable, how do we go about ensuring that the water we drink is clean? Once more, Dr. Eno Sylvia. You could filter water. You could even, there are filters that are already manufactured. But there are other ways of, um, to, to filter water by yourself in the house. You can get a, 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 a bottle, this um, 10 liters of supermarket. You can bore holes on the lid, cut in, in the lid and close. And you put water through the other part you have cut. That will help you to filter water if you cannot get a filter. But then try as much as possible to drink water because drinking dirty water too causes a lot of other illnesses that we know of. Um, we have water bonds, you can have typhoid, you can have diarrhea, dysentery. Some of those things are caused by either lack of clean water or eating of food that has that has not been properly washed, vegetables or fruits are not properly washed. But then drinking good water, clean water and doing hygiene needs you to, to do it clean water. Dr. Elna Sylvia speaking there to Grace Limunga Mukake on to something else. Today, March 23 is World Mythological Day. This year's edition is being celebrated under the theme. Uh, climate and water crisis. The main focus of this year's edition is on climate change and water concerns around the globe. On a sad note, Cameroonians are mourning one of their renowned and most successful economic operators, Fotso Victor, who passed away in Paris, France on March 20 from a brief illness at the age of 94. He died after being the re-elected as mayor of Banjun. Our reporter Eunice Mirioti in the following paper lights his portrait. I remember all those great times we had. Born in 1926 in Banjun, West Region of Cameroon, the billionaire is reported to have left school at the tender age of 15 to provide labor in plantations based in Fumbot and Bafang. At 21, Photo Victor settled in Balmayo, Center Region as a trader. Eight years later, in 1955, he engaged in public transport business but quickly abandoned the volume in the venture in 1960. At barely 44 years, Photo Victor went full swing into industrial business when, in 1970, he created Safka, a famous book production company. In 1974, he moved a step further and created Pilcam, a company that produces batteries, and this was followed by the creation of many other trading and industrial companies. So many memories, some good, some bad. Yes, and through it all. Other industries and companies found in Cameroon and Mali, which the Photo Group was credited for in the 1990s, included Femancam, Unalor, Soicam, Fabasem, Fishco, Fitocam, as well as GFA. This chain of industries and business enterprises was crowned with the creation of the CBC Bank in 1997, with branches spread out in some Semak countries. Fotso will be remembered for his generosity. In 1992, he donated a building to the Cameroon government hosting the Collège Laïque Polyvalent Photo Victor, which was later transformed into the Photo Victor University Institute of Technology. The tearing of some portions of the road in Banjun, the handing over a hundred churches to religious communities can never be left out. Photo Victor leaves behind his children, among whom is Yves Michel Photo, former Camerco GM. The business community, political colleagues, and Cameroonians of goodwill to mourn him. The burial program is yet to be made known. So many memories, some good, some bad. Yes, and through it all. Those memories will last forever. Out of the country, Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has announced the country's first death from coronavirus. In a tweet, NCDC said the victim was a 67-year-old man who returned to the country following medical procedure in the UK. He had underlying medical conditions and was undergoing chemotherapy. 
In Rwanda, there has been mixed reactions to the nationwide lockdown that started yesterday, the first of its kind in the continent. Measures imposed by the government include closure of all border points, restriction of movements outside homes and closure of shops, markets and bars. Also, all employees have been ordered to work from home while Rwandans returning from abroad must undergo a mandatory 14 days quarantine at designated locations. Rwanda so far has confirmed 19 cases, the highest in the East African region. Tanzanian President John Magufuli has said gatherings in churches and mosques have not been banned yet because that's where there is true healing. The Tanzanian leader who has a PhD in chemistry and is a devout Catholic also said coronavirus is a devil it cannot live in the body of Christ. He spoke yesterday during a church service in the capital, Dodoma, where he joined other faithfuls for worship. Tanzania has closed all schools, colleges and universities and suspended all sporting events for at least 30 days after the country confirmed its first case. Public gatherings have also been banned. The British High Commission in Kenya is trying to increase the number of flights to the UK before Wednesday's suspension of all international flights. In a tweet, British nationals uh, in need have been urged to contact the High Commission. The Kenyan government announced they were suspending flights after coronavirus cases in the country rose to 15. Islamist insurgents have seized control of a town in Mozambique. The overnight attack on Mosimboa da Praira marks another escalation in a conflict that has spread across the north of the country. A police spokesman said efforts to recapture the town are now underway. The attack began hours before dawn. Panicked residents said the fighters had blocked all exit routes and had seized control of a local military base. At least 10 people were killed in clashes yesterday between police and protesters in Guinea held, as Guinea held a bitterly disputed referendum that crit critics say is a ploy by the president to stay in power. President Alpha Conde is proposing a change to the constitution to codify gender equality and other social reforms, but his opponents fear the real motive is to reset presidential term limit, allowing him to run for a third term in office. Let's come back to talk sports. And in sports, the under-17 girls team of Sao Tome and Principe has left Cameroon after being blocked in the country for over a week since their match recently against the under-17 Lionesses of Cameroon. The team could not leave Cameroon due to the coronavirus that forced Equatorial Guinea to shut down its borders. The team was to make a stopover in Malabo before regaining their country. Negotiations between Cameroon, CAF, Sao Tome and Principe and Equatorial Guinea paved the way for the team to leave Cameroon on board a special flight. And to other organizers of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games have started drafting possible alternatives of holding the Olympic Games this summer, two sources familiar with the talk said in contrast to the Japanese government's stance that postponement is not an option, the Canadian government has asked organizers to make alternative plans B, C and D looking at different postponement time frames. Some of the options for now is scaling back the games or holding them without spectators, maybe postponing for one or two years or delaying for a month or 45 days and to add their voice to canada the spanish football federation also called for this summer's olympics to be postponed the president of the spanish football federation made a request to the ioc committee members and at a meeting with other spanish sports federation meantime canada had said that they won't send athletes to the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games, unless the games are postponed until the coronavirus is under control, the Canadian Olympic Committee and Canadian Paralympic Committee have urgently called on the International Olympic Committee and the organizers to postpone the event by one year. And it is with that that we welcome Annie Lisette Ambassa, who is the summary of this newscast in the French language. Bon après-midi, Annie. Bon après-midi, promise à Kanti. 
coronavirus, déjà 56 cas déclarés au Cameroun depuis ce lundi. Le ministre de la Santé publique fait état de 16 nouveaux cas d'infection sur les 26 personnes testées, soit 9 cas à Douala dans le littoral, 6 à Yaoundé dans la région du centre et 1 cas à Bafoussam dans la région de l'ouest. Il faut relever que la lutte contre le Covid-19 au Cameroun a fait émerger des activités commerciales, notamment la solution hydroalcoolique et les cachenés. Au niveau de la CEMAC, seule une solidarité communautaire peut, à bien des égards, sauver ce qui reste encore des acquis de l'intégration économique régionale au regard de l'interdépendance qui lie les pays de la CEMAC face au coronavirus. Législative partielle 2020 dans le nord-ouest et le sud-ouest, le scrutin s'est déroulé hier sans incident majeur selon Elecam et l'administration. Cependant, des candidats en liste sur le terrain contestent. Futsu Victor n'est plus l'industriel en politique camerounais est mort ce week-end des suites de maladies. Hors de nos frontières, Guinée, le scrutin législatif et le référendum constitutionnel ont été émaillés hier de violences avec de pertes en vies humaines. Sport, Confédération africaine de football, les compétitions sont en arrêt. C'est le service minimum. Hamad Ahmad, le président de la CAF, l'a confirmé ce week-end. And that is what we put together for you this Monday morning. Salomon is a nice sound engineer. Alan Kouak, my camera for the live broadcast on Facebook. The news was produced by Eunice Miriarty and the entire English Dex of Royal FM. Yannick Sivengele with her copyright clerk. Carol Prudence, a TNC for editorial coaching. Roger Kiek for coordination. Reverend Pastor Emmanuel Noel Bisai for general supervision. Our Balingo newscast comes up at 6 p.m co-presented by Germenta and Yves Modest Nge. Up next after me is all.